I think it's impossible for us today to imagine what a revelation the first photographs would have been to people, these mirrors with a memory, to record things that looked just like what we saw. People's ideas of time changed completely. For the first time, you would know what your grandparents looked like even if they died before you were born. To see this process make its place in the lives of ordinary people is to me the most exciting thing about it. It changed everything. In 1814, 1815, you have a man named Nesephore Niepce. And what he discovered was that asphalt was sensitive to light. He painted the solution on a piece of glass and put an engraving on a piece of paper on top of that. And where the light shined through and exposed that asphalt, it hardened. If you put that piece of glass with the asphalt into a solvent, it will remove the areas that weren't hardened. The earliest photograph we know is on a piece of pewter made by Nesiphore Niepce. It's a view from a window. It's from the 1820s. And this image made by asphalt still exists. So that's, that's the invention of photography. Niepce knows that he's onto something. And he takes Louis Daguerre on as a partner. Daguerre was well known in Paris in the 1820s, you know, well before the 1839 announcement of the daguerreotype. He was a showman. He ran this 75-foot diorama. Daguerre himself wants to make images. He understands how a camera obscura works. Niepce didn't have the money, he didn't have the youth, he didn't have the health. He really kick-started Daguerre. When Niepce died, uh, Daguerre continued his experiments on his own. By 1839, Daguerre has a, a system that is fully realized. It's perfect. It's a piece of copper coated with silver, and you have to polish it very well to the point where you have a polish that when you turn the plate towards a darkened room, it looks black. And it's fumed with iodine, and when you take it out of the box, it's yellow. That's silver iodide. The plate is then put into a camera obscura, or we would say camera now, but a camera obscura. Given enough time, it's exposed. When you take it out of the camera in, in a darkened room, there's nothing to see on the plate completely invisible, same yellow coating. But when you put it in another box with a little container of mercury and heat the mercury, the fumes of the mercury dance upon the plate. And when you withdraw that from the box, you have an image. You still have to fix the image. And fixing is a strange term. It basically means that you're preventing the plate from changing anymore as light strikes the plate. And you place it into a solution that fixes it is something that we now all call hypo. Daguerreotype is placed into a special case. It's designed to keep air away from the plate because air is what makes silver tarnish. Daguerre would give the process to the government. The government then would allow anyone in the world to do the daguerreotype, except England. And so if you wanted to make daguerreotypes in England, you had to pay a fee. This is the Giroud daguerreotype camera. It would be the world's first commercially manufactured lens solo cameras. It's, it's the camera, but it's also the system that goes with it that, that, that you need to process, sensitize and process the image. It's essentially an American phenomenon. It was the Americans that embraced it, that used it. It was Americans that were leaving home and striking out further and further west so that people could have something to uh, think about and to reflect on and to remember people by. We are in the uh, photography vault at George Eastman House. This is where all of our photo collections are stored. And here we have our wall of daguerreotypes. We have one of the largest collections of daguerreotypes in the world, over 3,500 daguerreotypes, including 1,500 French daguerreotypes, which is the largest collection of French daguerreotypes outside of France. The daguerreotype is a, both a negative and a positive image at the same time. 
Well, I think really to see a daguerreotype and get the full effect, you have to be holding it. It's an intimate thing, it's reflective, and sometimes you do see yourself, and that's kind of a, makes you part of the object. With daguerreotypes, there's infinite detail. There's something just so compelling about daguerreotypes. They're um, not made with the negative, so that daguerreotype plate was actually in the room with the person being photographed. So there's something of, I read as that person's energy on the plate. It's a very, very permanent process, much more so than, than all the processes we grew up with. I can take you to an antique shop that's uh, 15 minutes from here, and we can find a daguerreotype made in the 1850s. And guess what? They're still in perfect condition.